Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, I bless God because it's a new week, and by the things that the Lord have laid in my heart to share with you, I know He is determined to bless you. God wants to see you do well. He is excited when you do well. Praise God. And that's what I've been sharing with us on the man who God will bless. It's important you understand how that man works and how God blesses that man. But before going to the broadcast, the Lord has commanded us to do something on every broadcast. Are you ready? Come on now, let's call for that daily bread. Join me now as, you, as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. Lord, it's coming to me from every quarters. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. And Father, we thank you. You will uphold your word this week. And there shall be a performance of everything that we are going to speak about. Because we trust in you and in the ability of your word. Thank you. Holy Spirit, this week you will not hold back anything that will be profitable to us. And I declare right now, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Now, we are still on the same topic, but you know, on one topic, we'll look at it from different dimensions. And I'm just trying to explain to you from the Spirit of God the kind of attitude that God blesses and how to manifest the blessing of the Lord. I remember last week we got talking about tithing and why tithing is so important. Now, taking off from there this week, I'm going to be sharing some thoughts with us because, you see, if you don't understand the operation of God, then you miss it. So Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? Jesus has just finished teaching. And the disciples came to him and said, Why do you teach? Why do you speak to them in parables? Now notice they ask, they say, why do you speak to them? They didn't say, why do you speak in parables? They didn't say, why do you speak to us in parables? They say, why do you speak to them in parables? Meaning they have observed something about Jesus and how he teaches the people. They've observed the different kind of ways Jesus communicated. So they notice that there is this set of people that Jesus always taught in parables. So that's why after this meeting, they came to him and asked him that question, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus answered, verse 11, he answered and said to them, because, meaning he was not avoiding the question. He said, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it has not been given. Why do you teach them in parables? Jesus said, because to you, it has, they say it shall. He said, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. So God has designated to you the ability to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them, those people I teach in parables, it has not been given. So what has been designated to you has not been designated to them. So they will not receive what you have the ability to receive. Now I want you to understand this. It's one thing to be given 
It's another thing to receive what has been given to you. It's a good place to be that something is given to you. But how bad it is that you don't have that thing that was given to you. And why won't you have it? Because you did not receive it. The other fellows, it has not been given to them. So we can't even talk about, we can't even start talking about having it or not having it. It was not given to them. I want you to understand this. Because this differentiates our lives. If you miss this, you would practice what you think is Christianity for so long and one day you will wake up and wonder what you're doing. I'm telling you the truth. It has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now, what are the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven? What does Jesus mean the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven? Simply put, to you, it has been given to know how heaven operates. So why do I have to know why, how, how heaven operates? Because it is important. You know, Jesus said we should pray that prayer. It says that the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what are mysteries? Mysteries are secrets. So as it is done in heaven, or as it is, the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. So heaven is the reference for the will of God being fulfilled on the earth because it has to look exactly as it is actually written in heaven. So he wasn't talking about the map of heaven which will become the map of the earth. No, he was talking about the things that have been written concerning the earth in heaven. Let it be fulfilled here on earth. That's what Jesus was talking about. But how will that be done? That will be done when those on earth understand the mysteries in heaven. If they don't understand the mysteries in heaven, I'm telling you the truth, you will be wasting your time living life here on earth because everything you do on earth will stand the risk of getting rejected eventually. Catch this and catch life. So Jesus said, it has been given to you to know. Let me read the Amplified Version. He says, he replied, he, and he replied to them, to you it has been given to know the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. Now then, we are talking about the man that God blesses. So, first of all, understand this. Let me show you something in Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26. I think I read the scripture to you last week. But let me connect it to what I just read to you now. It says, For to, for to the person who pleases God. Now, I'm reading from the Amplified um, Classic. For the person who pleases God, who pleases Him, God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, He gives the work of gathering and heaping up that He may give to the one who pleases God. Did you see that? The one who pleases God, there is something God gives to him. What is that? Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. Now, the one who doesn't please God, God gives that one something also. What does God give the one who doesn't please God? Watch this. He says he gives him the work. The one who pleases God, God gives him knowledge, wisdom, and joy. But the one who doesn't please God, so there are people who, here on earth who don't please God. Now, because they don't please God, God knows them. He knows them. Now, because He knows them, 
and they don't please him. So he has a job for them to do. What is the job? Now, this is a ministry that God gives to them. I want you to get this. God gives them, he says, the work of gathering and heaping up. The work of gathering and heaping up. That he, the purpose of the one, I, I, I wish you would come to terms with this truth. The one who has been given the work of gathering and heaping up is gathering and heaping up for someone. Who's the person he's gathering and heaping up for? He's gathering and heaping up for the one who pleases God. So if I tell you, you that is pleasing God, if I tell you somebody is laboring night and day physically for you, I pray you understand it. This is where it's coming from. It's not wishful thinking. It is written in the scriptures. It's not just something we sit down and, and you know, someone say, you know, believers are just lazy. They just sit down there and then they are waiting for manna to fall from heaven. There is actually manna that falls from heaven. There is. But you see, it is given to those who are doing the work that pleases God. Now that's why I'm sharing these things with you. Sometimes it pays to pay attention to God's word. It pays. So Jesus said, and, and, and this is this is this is where true Christianity lies. Paul was speaking, he says, I pray for you that you will know what is the hope of your calling. You know what that means? That you will know why God called you into this thing. That you will know why God called you into this life. That you will know. Because many don't know. Many have been in church. Many are pastors. They love God. But they still don't know. Why? Loving God is not enough. You have to position yourself to receive what God gives. And what does God give? He will not give you money. God does not give money. Say, ah, I think, no, he doesn't give money. Why not you read it here? He says, one that pleases him, he doesn't give him money. He gives him wisdom, knowledge, and joy. The one that does not please God, he doesn't give him money. He gave him the ability to walk. So one has the ability to walk. What walk? The walk of making money and gathering money. Another has been given the ability to operate in kingdom wisdom, kingdom knowledge, and kingdom joy. Now, that's what Jesus was talking about when he says, to you, it has been given the, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. How does heaven operate? This is how heaven operates. Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. So much so God declared that anyone who's going to glory should glory in this, that he knows and understands me. To know God is not a thing you do by yourself. It has to be given to you to know him. So now then, he has given us the ability to know him and to operate in his kingdom. How? Operate from heaven. How do you operate from heaven? Mysteries, secrets of heaven are being given to you by way of knowledge, by way of understanding. And I'm telling you the truth, when you have this understanding and knowledge, it gives you joy. You can't be sorrowful. You can't, you can't carry a long face. You can't sit down there and wonder, hmm, I don't know what to do. I've tried. Hey, you can't. Why? Because it has been given to you. It has been given to you. Hali Broko say, what has been given to you? Wisdom, knowledge. And if you truly have this wisdom and knowledge, joy it will be a natural thing that flows from because the wisdom and knowledge of God in you produces joy unspeakable full of glory hallelujah that's the truth 
That's, the, that's why we don't get sad. That's why we are never, we don't have dull moments. You know why? We don't have moments of confusion. You know why? I remember years ago, the Lord said, hey, do you know why I'm with you? <laughs> you know, he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So one day he asked me the question, do you know why I'm with you? It took me a long time to answer that question. And it took the Holy Spirit to give me the answer. Because when God asks you a question, hey, don't, don't think. He, 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 anytime God asks you a question, he is trying to lift you up from your way of reason. And so why is he with us? He's simply with us to always tell us what to do. So if you don't acknowledge that about his presence in your life, you get nothing from him. Praise God. Our time is up today. But listen, I'm setting your mind up for a great shift that is going to come your way this week in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you today that your heart will be open to receive that which God gives. And you will not be counted among those who labor for those who please God. But rather, you will be among those who please God. And you will receive that which God has assigned to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.